Hey, what's up, guys? Mike Glover, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Pro Tips. On this episode, I got a special guest, DJ of GBRS. DJ's a career Navy guy, med retired, uh, and spent a, a decade in development group. And I'm here to get his expertise on hide over bore. A lot of guys now are getting used to seeing optics uh, 1.93 inches or above over their optic or over their bore line. And that's a thing we've been doing for years in special operations. Uh, my first hits in Iraq, 06, 07, 08, 09, uh, and so on and so forth, were like EOTechs on carrying handles kind of stuff. Uh, now we have the mounts, the accessories, but I'm gonna let DJ explain that because he's a modern GWAT guy uh, more experience in uh, in the modern GWAT than I have in combat. And so uh, I'm gonna talk to him about his expertise. I, I noticed it almost like it's getting higher, mm -hmm. like the red dot's getting higher. Uh, for people who don't have a clue to what that means, why would you do that? I think, uh, I think the industry did it for passive shooting through night vision, um, thinking that the higher the, uh, the optic is, they can actually look through tubes. I'm, I'm not about that. I don't believe it. I think looking through tubes, through another tube, it decreases your situational awareness and we need we need as much situational awareness as possible. I do love it for teaching heads up display, um, putting your body in a, a better position because we deal with body armor. So I feel the old school, when we drop the uh, the actual optics super low to the bore line, we have to put ourselves in a position uh, that isn't advantageous for taking rounds into body armor. More often than not, we start to lean forward and we see guys get hit high thoracic and they get killed, where if they were standing straight up and they drive out their eye line, we present plates to the threat, we have a, a better shot of actually uh, receiving rounds into your body armor, vice dipping your head down, now we're exposing clavicles and everything else, just a place you definitely don't want to get shot at. Um, but the situational awareness associated with the elevated riser, I really love. I get to see everything 360, 720, below me, above me, left and right because I'm put in a neutral position and especially the transition drill. When I drop this gun and I drive my pistol out, my head is in the exact same position. But I shouldn't have to know two different styles of Kung Fu. I shouldn't have to drive out my carbine, transition to a pistol and get this motion. It's just, it's a delay and we don't need it. And inside of CQB, um, I really like this because it keeps me vertical and it keeps my spatial awareness in control. I feel uh, when we first learned CQB, the, the shooting stance was a lot of this. And that inside of a close proximity, it takes up your field of fire. I need to be responsible for everything I have. And this is what it is, but inside of CQB, guys do a 50 meter dope, 100 meters here, whatever you want to do, but they forget inside CQB ranges to the height of a bore concept. It's a math formula. From the center of this optic to the center of this bore line where the round is going out, it's a math formula. I have to know what that is, and I have to be able to apply it in a split second. I'm moving down my common wall. There's a presentation I have to shoot. I have to know inside of this range, I could be up to three inches off. Like in a certain scenario, I might have to shoot over your shoulder and miss you in order to hit something. Think about a hostage rescue scenario. Bad guy, his head's right here. I have to shoot above that dude to hit him high. If I go to shoot him in the chin, I'm gonna miss and shoot potentially the hostage. So we're responsible for every round that leaves that gun and every aspect of this. So I really like it um, just for the heads up display processing speed and everything else but the height over bore concept um if we walk it down the kind of the way i explain it is if we drive it out the same way it ever was clear and safe yep so if we drive it out the same way it ever was and i walk forward and i point my actual uh my actual muzzle on the target that'll tell me what it is so right now i'm going to drop my red dot optic on the number eight i'm just going to walk forward and i'm going to touch my red dot to the actual target. So right now my red dot is in the center of the eight. It's right there. I think four inches of... That's a big move, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you are responsible for all four inches. And if you don't know what that offset is and you have to be able to do that formula, running down a common wall at full speed, you have to know the closer I get, the higher that goes. At 50 meters, point aim, point impact. Now inside of a room, I've got to know. I can get the four inches off. Yeah. And as these things get higher, I'm a big fan of the old school stuff. Um, the unit guys running around, you know, aim points on top of the carrying handle. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. 
and I shot it not too long ago, it feels so much better. Yeah. And if you look at shooting performance, even myself, I'm a much better shooter now than I was when I was in because of stuff like this. My situational awareness, I can process so much more because I'm giving myself the advantage here. Yeah. I'm not losing it. If we think about dropping down to the bore line here, I don't see anything above me. I can't see your face right now, but I can now. I can look out of my periphery and I can make eye contact with you. We can have a non-verbal right here. Yeah. It's very hard to do that from here. I can't see anything except your center line. Yeah. So CQB, everything's about processing information. It's non-verbal communication. It's everything. Um, and I feel with this, it allows you to put your head in a more advantageous position. The same concept as uh, the backplate shooting. If I make it all the same and I stare where I want it to go, my high ready presentation, my head doesn't have to move. My compressed low ready, my head doesn't have to move. It's all here. When I do my transition, my head doesn't have to move. I'm putting myself in there and I'm presenting plates everywhere I go. Yeah. By just having to lean forward into it. But the height of a bore, I feel not enough professionals are harping on it in the courses. Yeah. When you get close to that target, we're gonna have a huge hold off guys. And it's the same thing for the laser. You're responsible for this and your red dot optic and everything in between. Yeah. We have to understand the why. And we have to be able to teach it to our students. Like this is height over bore, this is why it matters. Because inside of CQB, there is no do over, there's no mulligan. Yeah. You break that shot, you're four inches off, you're responsible for it. I think about movement through a house. Most guys are used to shooting on flat ranges where they're standing still in their cubicle on their range. But when you're moving through a house and you have that heads up display to, to lean into a gun because the optic is so close to the bore line, it's so unnatural. And and I actually, you know, you guys teach SWAT officers, we teach SWAT officers, and I see a lot of SWAT teams still using low mounts where they have to embed their head to take the shot. Or they don't in sim play when they're doing sim hits, and then they're just sending it with no reference point for their optic um, in the field of their view. And so it's like they're, they're shooting the guns down here or they're shooting it here, but with this rise, which is, um, I'm curious the distance, because I know like 1.93 is like a, you know, um, a variable a magnification riser uh, optic line. But when you look at these carbines and these new um, uh, mounts, this was the Unity, yep. um, and this one, which is uh, proprietarily you guys, what's the distance in that mount? Is it? So that is 2.9. Yeah. And I love it. Two it, nine. It uh, it um, it makes it so much easier to see everything spatially. When I drive into my line, I don't have to drop my head, um, and we're realistic about it. I'm not searching for a cheek weld. I don't need them. Yeah. I've got every other tool on this gun that's set up just for me. So when I drive it up, one point of contact, two, three is my shoulder, and people uh, they seem to get hung up on the fact that my buttstock is not centered into my shoulder pocket. Yeah. I've been shooting the kit my entire life. It's barely into there, my yeah. collarbone, that's what it is. Yeah. So you hear the argument like, let's see a follow-up shot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like there's nothing but follow-up shots. I don't need to have this old school mentality of I have to be sunk Barricade. in this gun like this. Yeah. Because I have no situational awareness and that's what is going to keep you alive. Yeah. It's how fast I can see the threat, process all the information. Boy doodle loop. That's all it is. This gives you the cheat code to boy doodle loop. Yeah. Observe, orientate, decide, and act. Yeah, I, I like that. That that should be the way, the path, and and uh, especially when I think I think about my GRS days, and I think about operating as an individual doing single man CQB, uh, single man hostage rescue. You're talking about needing situation awareness and tactical advantages. If you're barricaded in your gun with a narrow field of focus, you have none. You're looking through a coke straw, and you don't have any of your mates. It's just you. So taking that gun, dropping it down, but having the optic within referenceable distance and a snapshot is critical. This is higher than I've ever seen it, but I've ran this same setup 06 with a charging handle mount with a Picatinny rail integrated on top of the charging handle with a M68 with an aim point red dot. So I get it. And now uh, you guys are making the mounts for them. There's, there's a lot of good mount companies that also uh, afford you the opportunity to get over your infrared or vis lasers that you got mounted on your gun, which is this We'll do a breakout session on this because I know everybody's curious, um, but that'll be a different pro tip. Cool. Let's. Let, I think let's shoot this a little bit and let me see the standoff, and then uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that, man. That's a, that's, that's life-saving critical information from an expert who's done it before. So here we go.
a hell of a rise, but I like it. It's in my field of view. I can snapshot it. It's, uh, it makes a significant difference. Cool. Thanks, DJ. I appreciate it, man.